Northern Edgar County Ambulance Service. Uh, however, uh, once we uh, set the special service area up, the uh, county board is going to have to uh, accept any and all bids. They're going to do a public bidding process for any ambulance services that would like to get the contract for the area. And so then that would be the uh, ambulance service which would, uh, which would provide a new service. Okay, so, so all these townships that are in this addendum here, um, roughly how many ambulances are provided for this area in this addendum? Right now we've just got two. Okay. Based here in Crystal. Okay. Uh, well, one of the reasons why we're, we're doing all this, uh, making most of the money, uh, the way we've been funded through since like 1987, it's just not enough money to go around it. Of course, we have to find a new way of funding it. And uh, the county board guys there, they can tell you that the ambulance to the south, they're funded through a tax base, and that's what we're looking to make this sort of work. We're looking to get more money, but we're looking to make have a better service up here too. And we'll have more people uh, there 24/7. You know, it, it costs a lot of money to make things better. Well, that was my next question: Is mostly everybody that's on the fire department and ambulatory service are they all volunteers? Yeah, they are. Okay. They do get okay. paid per call. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you know, they can they can give us. 10 hours a week, or they give us 100 hours a week, you know, it's just whatever. And, that, and that's another problem we got, you know, times have changed. Uh, and people just can't give the hours that it did 25 years ago. You know, they have, you know our kids in sports, and they run here, run there. It's just a different world. Kevin, can I interrupt? Sure. Uh, also, the state keeps up in the end on, on the training that's right. required. Yeah. The training is expensive. It takes a lot of time and then to maintain the training. Yeah. And that's important to maintain the level of service that the folks up here would like to have, we think. So this amount of money is more or less for personnel than all it's not for equipment? No, it's both. It'll be both. Uh, well, the way we're running now, I mean we have very little money to upgrade our equipment like if we need a new angles right now be virtually impossible. Um, and I guess my last question, this is probably my biggest objection, is I don't think it's fair that, um, let's just say for my instance, let's say my house and property is worth 200000 and I've got neighbors to the north or south, and their property is worth 50000 okay? I don't feel it's fair that I should pay four times the amount that somebody else is going to get the exact same service that I'm going to receive. You know, my opinion or my thinking is we should take a toll of the amount of houses and businesses that are going to be on this tax basis and divide it among that so everybody is really paying an equal share. And that's really it. Everything else, I mean, I understand we're in a rural community and yeah, it's hard to to get money and so forth, but I think it just should be justified and equal that everybody pays their, their fair share. Well, I, I, I will say it, I mean, it don't look fair, but that's the way the whole county is funded. Like if you've got 100 acres that's worth $10,000 an acre, and your neighbor a couple miles down the road, you got 100 acres that's worth five, you're going to pay more tax because you have better ground. And just like if you've got a not your home to me, you're going to pay more tax. I mean, that's just the way it works. Get out here. Okay. Yeah. And to address that, Robert may have a better answer, but I don't disagree with you, but legally, I don't think there's any way that locally we can structure a tax that way. I, I think that would get shut down in the heartbeat. So what are you going to do on an instance where you're talking 20 cents per hundred dollars of assessed value? So let's say after you combine everything, let's say you do not get that $250,000. What are you going to do at that point? If you can't come in with that amount of money that you're proposing here? 
we're going to form a committee once we're through all this process, including folks up in this area. And Derek Morenson, who lives up here, he's a board member, he headed up the last contract that we did. I, I guess the simple answer is we'd have to go back to the committee and figure out what we were, where we erred that caused that not to be enough, or not to be enough, and then remit it and restructure the contract that we we could get through. Now we were lucky enough; we've been taxing for ambulance district down south. Number one, we've been taxing about three hundred forty-five thousand dollars a year. We went through a bid process here a little over a year ago, correct? And we wound up finding a bidder that didn't want any. I don't think that's going to happen here. Well, we're hoping that we have a bidder or several bidders, we're hoping like we did last time, that will create some competition. We have a strong set of, of uh, things that they have to do in order to meet the criteria of the contract. And then we'll get a good service for a good price. There are no guarantees. Part of putting out that bid spec is doing the analysis of the tax base and putting a maximum on that. So we are see what it comes back in. Right. We're not we're not we're not in a vacuum here. We have an idea of what what comes in, so we can put a reasonable cap on that. Could you see more than two stations with the ambulatory service? Right now, you said one in Edgar County, one in Christmas, right? Right. Well, so oh, Paris. 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 The special ambulance ambulance service area for the south is based out of the Horizon Health. Okay. The one currently in the north is based out of our rush here in town. Um, so it would be entirely dependent upon the um, company or the entity that earns the contract where they put their station. I would say part of the bid spec would put out would be a requirement to have a centralized location for where they put their ambulance. As far as more than one, I doubt it, but okay. that would be over to the whoever wins the contract. Okay, thank you. Bill? Bill Brinkley, uh, and the ambulance or ambulances is whatever we're going to have one or two still will be housed here at Christman? Um, I mean, they're not that, coming from Paris again, are they? Right. So we, when we build out that spec, and so that would be part of the committee's job, is what is most appropriate. We would basically want the same level of service we currently have or better. So when we, when we put that together, part of that would be the geographic location of the base, right? So that, that's an ongoing discussion and, and say we will take outside, you know, uh, advice or input on that. Um, but nothing's hard and fast at this point. But you can expect that they will be located in the area. We want to make sure that the ambulance service maintains presence in uh, the Northern Edgar County area. Okay, and, and for our benefit, the best place is right here in Christmas, right? For the, the ones that are made in the proposal. I would expect so. I mean, so there's any number of ways to do that. But yes, yeah, that okay. would be reasonable to expect it would be in Christmas. Okay. Now, you could also say, here's the, how about a huge I mean, you know, that's out, but that means that that's my opinion. I think it would be best right here in Christmas. That would be up to the committee putting the bid specs. I know when we put together the specs for the southern part of the county, one of our requirements was that the ambulance had to be based, I believe it was within five miles of the courthouse. That's how we declared it, you know, a nice central location. And, you know, you guys get put together, it's going to be a matter of looking at a map and figuring out the best place to have it mm -hmm. to respond. So The committee does not have the last, absolute last word on it. The county board will decide on the actual specifications. But if we're wise, we'll listen to the folks up in this area as to what they want. Yeah. Okay? And okay. if there's something to skew, we will have open meetings. Everything will be open. And if there's some issues, then we'll deal with them. Okay. Okay. And my second question is that <clears throat> if indeed the proposal passes, the tax money that is taken in 
for the proposed counties here, or excuse me, the proposed townships here, that goes to them townships. It doesn't go south. It goes to the special Thank service you. area. That's all. Yes. Yeah. They've got their own, we've got ours up here. It'll be totally separate, accounted for separately, audited separately. I do have a lady that sent in, she could not be here. Uh, her name is Sandra Compton, and she said, please consider this as my official notification of the objection of the formation of the above subject, which is the Edgar County Special Ambulance Area Number 2. And I said I would read that for her. Okay? Yes, sir. I almost called you Sarah. Lisa? <laughs> this is Ellis. Uh we live 13 miles. We're about as far to the northeast as you can get. Um, and I am definitely not opposed to additional taxation uh, if that is needed. But I felt like I didn't have enough information to make an informed decision when we were voting. And I'm patient accounts manager at the hospital, but I have no involvement in the ambulance billing. But in my role, I do have knowledge that leads me to ask some questions. Um, what proportion of your rents are to Pleasant Meadows? Probably 75% or more. And do they pay? The insurance companies pay. Do you, so of the runs that you make there, you always get reimbursed? Most of the time. You run into the occasional, not necessarily the nursing home, but occasionally a patient who doesn't have insurance. Then we have a billing company that they work with them. But so it doesn't matter whether it's emergent or non-emergent or just a lift assist. We don't bill if we don't transport. So if it's just a lift assist, we don't bill. Okay. And is that true everywhere? Is that true for any any resident in your township? In Northern Edgar County, yes. Okay. Um, so what's your vision when you're fully staffed? As far as I mean, money goes. basically, the money that we need is to have staff. The big change has been we've been a volunteer service for years, and we just can't do volunteers anymore. Between the training, the personal life, you know, time, and basically, this money is going to pay staff. You know, we pay staff some now that comes out of our other that money, you know. It's still going to be covered under this, so that those other funds will be used for equipment or whatever. But basically, the, the money for the special service area is covering the payroll. So you're looking at two fully functional ambulances with one full staff on being what? paid and another on call? Well, again, that would have to go to bid specs. Um, I can say I based the numbers off of one ambulance staff with two people 24 7. So, what's your average for how many calls you have a day? We, we do about 500 a year. So, less than one a day? More than one a day, yeah. Okay, sorry. Less than two a day? Yeah. Nothing else, please? No, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, you're going to put this pack on. It's on the every year now, right? Yes, that's the way it works. Yes, it will work a while. Okay. Land values go up. It's going to keep going up every year. That'll be right. It will be based on on not the land values. Well, it is based, but it's a max of twenty six cents per hundred evaluation. That'll be every year. Yeah. Put my two hundred acres on down here. It's going up. It, it goes up between 150 to $300 dollars every year. It's been that way for 20 years. I, I'm against it. I don't stand for that. Your, your charge is $15 an acre every year. Yeah, that's great. It's great. great. Every year, another $15. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Every year, another $15. Every year, another $15. That's right. I don't care what price you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can only bear so much of this. I'm against it because I don't live in the town. But I'm going to make It's going to keep going up. I'm paying about my 
when they go on up with a tax going up every year, they have to help them to keep paying it every year. It's going to go up every year. It's taking a hit on me. The only caveat to that would be as we fit it out, you know, on every second, third year, potentially a bidder could come in below the max assessed value, at which point you could get some relief. But I understand the issue. Yes? What's the audit situation on uh, anything that receives county tax money? Well, there are several different agencies, but everything under the the county board is audited on an annual basis by an outside auditing firm. I think uh, HRC is audited separately. Um, the health department is part of us. There are a couple of agencies outside of the county umbrella that we collect taxes for that have their own audit firms. But WIFLI currently has the contract to audit it. It's required by the state of Illinois. It has to be turned in to the state of Illinois every year by a certain date.
26. Yeah, I, yeah, that's my you know major major majority. But, I mean, the bottom line is it's just, and I'm not knocking uh, Horizon. I think they've got a good service down there, but if you have to come basically from the southeast corner of Paris to remain County Line, if it's critical. So how do you vote on this referendum? Is everybody going to be sent a letter with a ballot, or how's that going to work? That's already been done. We already had the uh, referendum last March. Really? Yeah. Okay, because I never got anything. It I got just this. The referendum. It was on the uh, ballot back then. Uh, or just March. Yeah. Yeah, it said March or something like that. Yeah, yeah back in March. Yeah, see, I never got anything in the mail about voting on that. Was you in Edgar County then? I'm in Edgar County. Was you in Edgar County in March? <laughs> it, it was in all the papers. I mean, we had. So it's just in the papers. You didn't get anything in the mail. Yeah. No, 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 that's not a requirement. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was just a non-binding. Right. Record. That was so, an extra yeah. step beyond what actually needs to take place in order to form the special yeah. service area. So what what we need to do to form the special service area yeah. is what we're doing now, starting today, and then there's a. Take over for the 60 day period where a uh, majority of both the voters and the landowners in mm -hmm. the service area uh, townships, if more than 51% say we don't want it, then it's killed. Okay. If not, it goes through. So that'll just be in the local paper then. As far as that. Whether or not it passes. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be in my well, let, let the attorney yeah. answer that one. Well, then uh, after the uh, 60 days has passed and no such petition has been filed with the recorder's office at the Edgar County Courthouse, then uh, the uh, county board will be allowed to vote on the ordinance establishing the special services. Yeah, that would be the final vote. And if they have a majority of votes in favor on the county board, then uh, they can file, or well, then they can file the ordinance with the uh, quarters office, and then it would be official at that point. So you're saying you have to go file a petition in the court that you're the, against this? In the uh, yeah, in the recorder's office. Okay. Yeah. Or in the yeah county clerk's office. Yes, sir. You're saying to get down to the county board to sign it, not the general public. The, the, it is up to those who are opposed, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. to start a petition drive of landowners and electors, voters. And if they get 51% to say they do not want the ambulance district, then the county board cannot create one. If they do not get 51% of either the landowners or the electors, then, then the, the district will be formed. That's the way the state law is set up. Yeah. Did I make that clear? So that'd be the signatures of approximately 1,090 voters and how many landowners? Uh, it would take 1,390 uh, property owners and 1,100 and t pardon me, 10 voters. You'd have to have both. It's 51% from each of those groups separately. It would be two separate votes there. It's not, it's not a vote. vote, it's just petitions. Okay. <coughs> you don't have to get that many signatures on each petition. Saying as a person domestic, if we are resident of these townships, but you own property in townships, we have to say, you know, we're having an active search or not, right? That'd be one of the two petitions. Okay. Any questions? I assume, Robert, that if you are a resident and a landowner, you can sign both petitions. Yes, I believe you so. Know, you'd, you'd have to be able to, but maybe I don't know. <coughs> 
Yeah. And it's landowner of record. In other words, if you own the ground, and I know I was talking to a friend of mine today who said that she had gotten uh, something for herself and then something, she was listed three different ways. They have, they have to sort that out. So. Anybody else? Well, yes, sir.